You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Would you do the yeah. mm -hmm. That's my penalty. Yep. All right, we're going to call our workshop meeting together to order on Tuesday, April 13th at 2 o'clock. I'm going to ask uh, Commissioner Bill Pickens to do the invocation and ask Commissioner Adams Act to do the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise if you can. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this glorious day and all the blessings in it, Father God. We thank you for the opportunity to gather here, Father God, and we look forward to the presentations and the public input, Father God. Just let the commission um, use this to make the best decisions for the citizens of Putnam County. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Pickens, Commissioner Adams, Zach. I appreciate it. Um, is there any public comment on agenda items? We're going to get to some of the things if you're, if you just got one, okay. Seeing none, we're going to move on to our Port Authority workshop. Um, is there any public comment on Port Authority items? All right, then we'll move on to our administration. Julianne, you want to take the purchase of land in the business park? Yes, sir, Chairman. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, staff has been contacted by Mr. Callahan, who has reached out and expressed an interest in purchasing some additional land which surrounds the facility that he uh, previously purchased. Premier Development has offered um, $25,000 per acre for the following sites, and I believe there was a map included um, within your packet. It is those adjacent parcels, and in total, it's roughly 12.56 acres, and staff is seeking direction from the board as to your will. Commissioners? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I'm going to have to have more information yep. before I'm on board. Um, I have no interest in just blindly selling uh, the in, uh, 12 acres and 12 and a half acres in the industrial park for $25,000 an acre. Well, that sounds like a lot of money. It really isn't for that type of land. It's bare, pennies on the dollar of what it's really worth. So I'm going to need more. I don't mind selling it as part of, an, of a package of economic development, but I need more information than just he's willing to pay 25000 that, That's my comment. Okay. Thank you. What would you, um, you want to know what he's going to do with it too? Well, a, a, mostly a timetable on when he plans to do it. Okay. In other words, not just buy it and sit on it 10 years and take 12 acres of the industrial park right here or the business park right here in a time that that something could really happen with it, basically tie it up like, you know, s some things have been done in the past in different areas of the county. People buy them up because they're a good deal and sit on them for an undetermined amount of time and nothing happens with that property. I don't want that to happen with the business park if it turns out that we could do something for economic development, which is why we own it in the first place. Correct. Mr. Ross? So I, I agree wholeheartedly. and. What, what I would personally like to see is a you know a complete business plan that also shows um, what he's going to build. He could come in there and build a, a 3,000 square foot building or less and say, well, I, I built a building and there's really no um, positive economic impact for us. I'm aware of property across the street that um, we're working with a developer that, that closed on it about a month ago and spent a little north of a million dollars and they've they've got about 50,000 an acre. Yeah, and it's right across the street from the business park. so. Um, I think we should slow down a little bit and, and get in because if, if he if he's building a building in the business park that's one thing but why does he need the, the St. John's Avenue frontage that's the sweet meat and that's where you know you, you've got most value so I, I I would agree I think we should slow down a little bit and ask him to come and do a complete presentation and see if we want to sell him all those parcels um, and just that's just my two cents worth Julianne would you think you could get him in here to meet with us individually well, I don't think we want to do it as a collective group, do we? Let me reach out to Mr. Callahan and determine if he's available to be on site or if possibly we could set up some Zooms with each of you. Okay. And then maybe we can do individual. Find out I'll meet you face to face. I don't mind. Well, I, I prefer face to face. I, I'm exactly on board with Commissioner Rawls on this one. I'm telling you right now, I think we're eating out the same trough here. I mean, it's absolutely. <laughs> 
got to be one of them situations where somebody's not just buying it for investment because $25,000 an acre in that area on today's marketplace, like I said earlier, is pennies on the dollar. So right. I think uh, we've got to have a solid plan on what he's going to do and not just come in and set up a pole barn and say, okay, I built my building. You know, so uh, we've, we've got to have a plan on what this is going to do and why we should give him a better price of market for the property. I agree. Mr. Adams, that. I'm going to third their ideas, but I'm going to take a little bit further. I wouldn't mind giving someone property if they had some job criteria linked to it. You know, if we're going to develop 120 jobs in the next three years, and there was some step thing to it that we could actually keep track of it and hold them accountable to it. Um, but yeah, 25,000 is way too little for that right now. But, but I mean, if we under economic development, we should have some criteria. And I don't know if, where we have that or if we need to start developing something like that. We, where we have criteria for, you know, if you're creating 10 jobs, maybe we can help you out with taxes or help you out with land or, or something like that. But whatever that is, I think we should take we, these case by case probably. Yeah, exactly. We kind of set that bar as we go. We always have in the past, and that's, you know, a good suggestion. But I think we've got to start with that, that he's got to have a solid plan for us to uh, support that. Mr. Pickens. I'll, I'll forth that. What everybody said is... Um, yeah, to slow it down and um, whether he wants to meet individually or Zoom, like you said, or with the commission uh, of what his plan is for that property. Yeah. All right. So you got your marching orders then. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Any other general discussion on Port Authority? All right. We're going to adjourn, adjourn the Port Authority workshop and come back to the... Go back to Port Authority workshop real quick before we... Mr. Troxel. The, um, the eight inch backflow preventer out there at the, uh, I was talking with the fire marshal about a job at the Port Authority the other day and he, he mentioned the, the backflow preventer the, for the fire main mm -hmm. that's out there. Um, he's questioning whether or not it's serviceable and has been serviced and I told him as far as I know it had been. Do you know if it has been or what the status is? I will find out. All right. Okay. Thank you. Now can I close the Port Authority? Okay, closed Port Authority. We're going to go back to BOC workshop. Mr. Leonard, Plaquette Daily News. <coughs> Sorry for Mr. Leonard. I've had to put him off for a, little, <laughs> a couple weeks to get to get it working just properly with him, but uh, I apologize. But. No worries, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, members of the commission. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, come before you this afternoon. Um, in April of 2020, uh, this county... Um, uh, with the commission uh, on board and uh, 12 other partners began a year-long program called Positively Putnam. And the purpose of that was to help provide a series of projects and a daily dose of positive information for the members of Putnam County as we entered into um, the darkest days of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And uh, throughout each month of uh, April, May through uh, March of 2021, that has been the case. Uh, I have provided for you a uh, synopsis of the projects that were carried out uh, with your support and uh, sometimes participation of each of you um, uh, individually, uh, personally at these events through the past year. Um, touched literally thousands of people in Putnam County personally with uh, delivery of, uh, of meals um, through uh, things like Epic Cure. Uh, Mr. Killebrew, who's here in the office, was uh, there on a hot June day, I think it was, when we were out there giving out uh, $10 gas cards to people who were coming through the line because they needed gasoline to get to their jobs or to other places. Um, we gave donations to the soup kitchens to crisis closets. Uh, we participated in a number of events personally throughout the year. And then each day uh, at the Palaka Daily News, it was our privilege to, um, to brand the idea of thinking positively about Putnam County and about the good things that we have here in our community. And so that's been something that we have done over the past 12 months. Um, as we came to the, toward the end of the program this year, a number of people in the community and several partners approached me and said, 
are you going to continue doing this? We're coming to the end of COVID, we hope, we think, but there's still some time coming and we, we think this is a really good thing, we wanna continue. So we have, we have uh, put together a program for April through December this year. So just a nine month program, just through this calendar year. Um, so we have um, 10 of the partners who have renewed already. Um, and anyone who has renewed, uh, our, well, we have 10 partners. We have two new ones. Uh, Barwick Banking Company, the new bank that is coming to town, is a partner, as well as Putnam Community Medical Center. They were uh, constrained by HCA, their, their ownership, from doing any sort of marketing last year. But we were able to push that through this year. So they're part of it now. Um, so, and for a repeating partner, which the county would be, there's a discount this year. So as before, it was a uh, investment of 750 a month to cover projects and the other cost uh, this time it would be 675 and and the difference in that will still carry out the projects as before just the newspaper will chip in that additional amount for the uh, returning partners so there is a um, a binder that talks about what the programs are projected to be for this year and um, i would say to you commissioners and to other partners we are open to doing different things as opposed to what is simply proposed here better ideas, we want to hear them because we certainly don't own a, a, a patent on all the great ideas for it. I appreciate the commission's leadership in being a part of this. I think it's important for the community to see that their elected leaders are a part of a program such as this. And I would open to any questions you might have. Mr. Turner has a question, Mr. Leonard. Um, how come you decided to only do it through the end of the year instead of till April of next year? Um, we just thought that uh, perhaps this would be the best way to carry it forward, but if, if you and other partners feel that we should go ahead, then we can certainly do that. Okay. Is it your belief that uh, it should be carried forward for another full 12-month uh, period? Well, I do. Um, also, the uh, what is the difference between the renewing partner's investment and the associate partner investment? What I'm assuming that the associate partners get less than the um, yes. the renewing. What what is the difference in the level of uh, okay the, for the uh, for the for an associate partner, which we did not have this past year. We had we had some organizations that said to us, "Gosh, I love the program, but it's a little bit too much for my small business to be a part of." So um, we opened up that other associate level, and so I believe. Um, it might state in here, Commissioner, um, for the associate uh, level. No, I don't think I did put that in this. Um, the amount of individual marketing that the associate members get is less and um, so have a, uh, a, f a limit on other things uh, with uh, the, the freebies that they may get as a, par as a partner. So, so basically... Um, they would still be, their logo would still be included in the positively putting them ads throughout the year and what have you. I'm just that is trying, correct. I'm that not is interested correct. in downgrading. I'm just interested in what they yes, would get if somebody right. else went on board. It's an opportunity just to make it, or a, 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 an attempt to make it more inclusive of additional companies. Okay, yes. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rawls. So the, I'm, I'm confused here. Um, if we're renewing, we're at six seventy-five a month. Is that correct? That is correct. Like I, I personally don't have any problem. I think we should do it. Oh, know, absolutely. The, the proof is in the pudding. If you turn around, a lot of the people that you've helped um, out are behind you. So, um, and I, is this something we do by um, consensus, consensus or? You make a motion. Well, if, if everybody's gonna, ready, I'd, I'd, I'd we're be willing to do make a motion. motion if we're going to make a motion. I'd like to do it. If the go program ahead. goes for a year, do it for a year. I, made the motion. I don't I, I would like to see the program go from April to April to April to April you know and continue on I think it's good for the community to pick up the newspaper I know everybody doesn't read the newspaper but a good significant portion of the community does and I think it's nice for them to pick it up and almost on a daily basis or some kind of a positive thing in there to go along with when they might twist the truth about other issues. Commissioner, well, uh, uh, <laughs> you knew you, 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 you weren't going to get in here without me hitting you, you Mike. You were, 
<laughs> you were doing well until you got to the yeah. point where you said, I know oh, everybody's yeah, going to play right now. Boom, crash. Okay. <laughs> I think um, it's, it's something. Yeah, I, uh, I would like to make a motion, if you'll allow me, uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. I move that, uh, that, we, uh, that we agree to be a renewing partner all the way through April of next year if the program goes that far. Here we have proper motion by Commissioner Turner. Yep. I'll second that. Second by Commissioner Rawls. Any further discussion, Mr. Okay. Adams? Yeah, I'll, I'll say as a subscriber to the paper, which was unexpected for me, but I do subscribe. Um, this is one of the best parts of the paper to me. So, and I know if I see someone in there that I know, you end up chatting with them on Facebook and saying, "Hey, I saw you in the paper," and vice versa. And uh, I think it's a cool thing we're doing, and it definitely is helping the community. So I'm all for it. I think this is an, Mr. Uh, Rawls? This is an opportunity where we could, when we now that we're getting into the budget, look at setting aside dollars for marketing for Putnam County. Um, and this might be one of the things you want to consider doing on a recurrent basis. And I want to put these on all of our county vehicles. We get I got one on my door. You know, let's, that's what we need to yes, do. Yes, I, I brought, uh, yeah. gosh, I heard 150 some. Yeah. Uh, does everyone have, a co have one? I can we provide can, more. Yeah. And with those decals, we're going to be uh, beginning a contest in the community for, for, uh, for distributing um, the decals and trying to find them on people's uh, windows and uh, spotlight them, give them a cash prize. Absolutely. We also have uh, t-shirts we'll be producing, so we'd be uh, delighted to provide t-shirts for commissioners. So okay. We have proper motion, proper second. Any further discussion? Hearing that, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, the ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Thank you very much. All right. And the program's from April to April, if y'all keep it that far, so. Okay. The uh, next item is uh, Public Works Letter of Support for the U.S. Bicycle Route System. Mr. Troxell, you're gonna be item B and C. Correct. Good afternoon. Uh, this next one is uh, for a letter of support for the U.S. Bicycle uh, Route System. Uh, it's a national effort uh, through AASHTO to build a U.S. bicycle route system um, led by FDOT, uh, the Bike Florida, and the Florida Bicycle Association, and the Adventure Cycling Association. The proposed route through Plaque and Putnam County um, uses about 10 miles of our, of our county roads and enters in from uh, the Plaque St. Augustine State Trail onto Ferry Road, Masters Road, all the way down through there. So what we're looking today is just a letter of support from from the commission, hey, we want to designate this as U.S. Bike Route 90. Right, uh, right. And that, that's all we want to do is a, then we will give this to FDOT and then they will proceed to, to get the whole the whole route designated as U.S. Route 90 or U.S. Bike Route 90. Yeah, Mr. Turner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mike, in your opinion, does this make us responsible for future maintenance that's on this I'm bike trail saying. before we even get involved in this? Because what's happened? in the past is when somebody's come in and asked us for support for a certain area of bike trail in the county, even on state right of ways, they come back later on and say, okay, you, you said you'd do it. So that means you're required to maintain this, this area from now on. So does this say that we're admitting or that we would do that later on, or does this just say we support the bike trail being there at this point? That's the exact question I ask, and uh, right now they said it's, it was uh, just that we support the bike trail, uh, and it's okay, going so on county roads. Uh, so we'll get another shot at if we or we do not want to perform maintenance on the portion of this we don't already perform maintenance on. Correct. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all thank I you. have. Thank you. Mr. Rawls? Um, this, uh, we discussed this at Waterways and Trails, and they uh, fully support this as well. Okay. All right, so they're looking for a letter of support. I'd say we do it. By consensus, is everybody in agreement? Yes. Okay, I'll we'll draw up the letter and... It's, it's in the packet, sir. You're ready for my signature? Yep. You want it now? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's on the thing. Okay, good. Got holes in it. <laughs> yeah, really. Sarah, will you? Well, Sarah's not here. Um, next item, public works leasing of tractors for mowing. I am real hot. This microphone. I'm freezing. On the microphone. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Mr. Troxel. All right. Uh, not hot knows. like that. The microphone was hot. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> as everybody knows, we have, we have five, five Kubota tractors. Right. Two of them are com completely out of commission. Uh, and so uh, we still have, we have three up on operational now. One went down the other day, but <coughs> we'll get fixed here shortly. But in discussing this many times with many folks, we talked about leasing tractors. And, I, and once we talked about it, it makes perfect sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, so um, this, this agenda item is, is bringing forward to the board the leasing of five tractors uh, this year, as soon as we can get it done, um, to pull our bat wing mower decks uh, versus purchase, purchasing now outright. Uh, I did price this through two different vendors. Uh, one is, is Futches, the other one is Ring Power. Uh, clearly, Futches is the, is the better deal across the board to get five of these things. So I can lease five, of, five tractors for a two year lease. We get five new tractors every two years. Uh, and that includes the, uh, the maintenance on them every 500 hours they come out here and a set of tires at the, at the end. So that, that price, that yearly price for five of them includes all that service and at the end, um, after two years, we get five new tractors to come. Um, Mr. Troxtell, Mr. Turner has a question. <clears throat> okay, so I thought we were gonna do three and then two, you decided to go on and just do the five because the others are barely hanging on. We were gonna like take the boom mowers off a couple and try to get through <coughs> a few more months of mowing and. So you just decided to go on and do five. Correct, yeah, because uh, one of them. I think that's a wonderful idea, I think. So we're going to get five new tractors every two years, and uh, all we got to worry about is when we wear the mowers out, we got to buy new mowers. Correct. But yes. the mowers are only a year and a half old, yep. too close to two years old maybe? Well, the, the, the mowers? The wing, the, yeah. yeah, in the back, they're, they're fairly new, yeah. Okay. Um, I know it's not part of this, but it is part of it. Have we had a chance yet to look at possibly taking some of the smaller roads off of the sides and using maybe trying to get somebody privately to do some of them instead of us taking tractors and trying to go down all these small roads that have a four foot wide shoulder and we're using a 15 foot back wing on a four, four foot wide shoulder. Have we had a chance to look at any of that yet? I have put together, I started on the, on the, Northwest side of the county it was breaking that down into smaller groups, but uh, other than breaking it down into roads, manageable little stuff, we have not sent that out uh, for get pricing yet, but I have started that process. Okay, and one last thing, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's not exactly on the subject, so if you'll allow me just a little bit, spraying. Are we going to try to implement a spraying program this year? I mean, we've been trying for three years now to do a spraying program. We got a brand new sprayer sitting in East Palaka. I don't think we have a licensed person or whatever the deal is. Are we trying to overcome those obstacles where we can spray some kind of inhibitor on the grass or something or another to uh, try to make our, our mowing dollars uh, uh, more efficient? Now, we, we have looked into uh, getting our own folks certified, but I did talk with a gentleman that, that does that service for other counties, and he lives here in Putnam County. Uh, he's actually going to do some 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 pond spraying for us right now. Uh, Aqua, I can't think of the exact name, but uh, so he's going to get me the, what their pricing is and what their what their contract is for the other county because I want to look at that as well. Uh, but I just talked with him last week about this. So. Do they spray inhibitors too, or do they just spray the stuff that knocks the big the uh, big growths back, the uh, barky products back, something with bark on them? Uh, I'm thinking it was just, I think it was an inhibitor, but I, I didn't, we well, didn't talk about that. Two different kinds, as right. you probably all right. well know. One of them kills, you know, right. everything back to the grass, and then one of them actually inhibits the new weeds from growing. <clears throat> so two different deals. But he's supposed to get me there, that information on, on what, <clears throat> what he does for other counties. Well, the grass has already started growing, so I'd like to get some kind of a program going this year to make that process more efficient if we could. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rawls? Um, we, we seem to have had a lot of issues with the Kubota tractors. They, they were right out of the gate, we are having issues with them. Um, you really think it's in our best interest to go back? Because even though this is a lease, their, their fallback position could be, well, you guys aren't <coughs> tearing them up when you're operating, so that falls outside the scope of repair. Um, what, what is there to prevent us from going down that rabbit hole? Again, just... Uh, our new mowing supervisor has to pay, you know, pay attention to how his guys are using the mowers. Uh, plus, 
we are having them go and do the maintenance on these mowers every 500 hours. Uh, they are going to the mower. I don't need to bring them out to Hastings or to okay. the shop. They will come out to do the, do the, the service on those uh, tractors for that cost. Okay, I, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, if you think it's in our best interest to- I, I truly and do. There, there's no mowers on this, it's just tractors on the, on the bid from Caterpillar they had um, mowers attached or mowers in their pricing is that something you're going to be coming to us later or we're we using the same mowers we have now I'm using the same mowers I have now okay. uh, but I got other other costs from them for other pieces of equipment as well but uh, for tractors this is this again I'm not a huge Kubota fan uh, but you know looking at the the cost versus you know ring power who we currently use for, for a the cost, it's yeah. just it's a it's a no-brainer in my mind uh, you know seventy seven thousand dollars for for five of them Seventy-eight thousand for five of them. That's you know fifty-eight thousand dollars a piece if you just bought them outright. Especially two years. I mean, you, yeah. you get two years, you get a new. Give truck. them back and then right. Yes. New ones. I, I I think that's reasonable. Mr. And, Pick, whoops, I'm sorry. Go ahead. When, we're, when, you, when you're building your budget for next year, hmm. are you going to be looking out two, three, four, five years? Yes. And, yeah. But then, could you also be looking at the potential of using, like Commissioner Turner talk, talked about, um, contract labor to be able to do the smaller roadside mowing? Yeah, and uh, you'll see when, when the budget process goes through, I did build in some 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 dollars to do some more outside contracting. Currently, we had like 25, or it was very minimal amount of, of money. Uh, so there is more money in there that I hopefully hopefully get for next year for more contracted stuff. Cool. Well, now if I may, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> now that we have a mowing supervisor, that person can can look at that as a as a as an alternative to how we've been doing it. And I think that since they're gonna do the maintenance, they'll be able to see what kind of over falling short, you know, how we're using the equipment. Mr. Pickin? Yeah, Mike, as we talked yesterday, I understand the, the preventive maintenance every, <coughs> every so often, but what, did you find out if there is a, a major breakdown, they gotta take it back to the shop and it'll be a couple months before they can get it fixed? Do they give us a loan or are we just down that tractor? Uh, I did. I did ask that question, and a loaner was not included in the in the in the in this price. Now he could include it in this price, but with that said, uh, I have five tractors. Uh, I still have the, the the three boom mowers, the Challenger boom mowers that we have, and the, the two new uh, Moramax boom mowers. And the Challenger mower, I took the boom off, so that is now that that's a, a sixth tractor, so to speak. So, Back and I had the ability to take another boom, uh, just boom arm off of the other Challenger. Form. So, yeah, yeah that's pretty much <laughs> what I was trying. So I have a, I have a backup if something, if something should happen. Okay. Um, I guess with breakdowns or they're not, I guess, do you know what's covered in breakdowns or, or in repairs of the warranty? I mean, if like it, if it breaks an axle, do you know if, if it's if it's if that's covered? I mean, is there like a hundred percent warranty on it, or is there a certain amount of things that aren't covered? I'd have to I'd have to look at the, the warranty period itself, uh, but I would assume there's certain stuff that it that will be covered under. Just don't think when we purchase something if it's covered under warning. I'm not sure what that warranty is uh, offhand, but I can find that out. Okay. All right, I'm good. Thank you. Is Mr. Adams, Adams or are we taking action on this? I guess my my question to you would be this: is with five mowers, do we have the manpower to run five mowers for 6,000 to 9,000 hours a year? Yes, currently we have, uh, we, have, we have enough to mow with five, five mowers on tractors plus some additional folks for our, our boom mower. Okay. All right, well, we, um, Chair, will entertain a motion on Mr. this Chairman, item. I move that we approve this and mm -hmm. put it on the uh, consent agenda at the next meeting. Okay, got a proper motion by Commissioner Turner to move the consent agenda. And proper second by Commissioner Pickens. Any other further discussion? Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Nope. Going to consent agenda. Thank you. And next item, Kevin Stevens, Mr. Stevens. <clears throat> Christine, can you turn that down? Because it's really, I'm feeding back a lot. Yes, sir. This is to, uh, hopefully finish up the Tangle Wild floating dock issue. $975. Yes, sir. So moved. 
Second. $975. I know. So we, and, that, and that's the last yeah. one, and we're done with Tangle Wild for now. Yes, sir. But now. that's, the, yeah, we got a proper Don't motion. Move. We got a proper second by <laughs> Commissioner Rawls. Further discussion. That's the problem we ran into again this morning where the cost overran came in and we capped it off at a price. Mm -hmm. We probably need to start thinking about giving a 10% leeway here based on what these current prices are doing. Especially on those smaller issues yeah. like this. Yeah, right. because this one, we had to go back and make sure that the guy would honor the price. I almost <clears throat> called a special meeting for $975, you know. Yes, sir. But, all right. Yep. No more discussion. All in Another. favor, say aye. 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 Uh, uh, Any opposed? Like one, sign? The ayes have it. One last comment. In a situation like this, I think that you could have been compelled to just go to the administrator for the 975 because the total project was still within his it, it within his prerogative, and I, this was an easy one to me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, to try to get it going. Hopefully, it hadn't gone up again. Jr., I'm going to postpone you just for a moment. And we're going to go, we're going to skip you and we're going to bring you in at the end and we're going to go to items F and G. And this is Nancy Russo, SMN Healthcare. And also Administrator Suggs could not be here today, but um, during the Tri-County meeting, I'll go ahead and set the stage for it. During the Tri-County meeting, Mr. Suggs reached out to Mr. Rawls and basically wanted to do a summit, an upcoming summit on mental health, substance abuse, um, homelessness, and it caught the eye, Commissioner Rawls, and I'll tell you this why information is being passed out. Mrs. Payne with the Regional Planning Council was watching the meeting, and she's reached out to me. Has she reached out to you? Yeah. She would like to actually host that summit with the Tri-County and bring all that in together. So I think you really hit something pretty good that's fixing to happen here in this area. I think it's gonna be a lot bigger than just those few issues. I think it's gonna morph into a lot, but uh, Nancy will let you take the floor for a moment and okay. then we'll go from there. Well, and my purpose here today is just to kind of outline some of the data for the county that you guys may, may or may not be aware of. So to start off on the right side of the folder, I have our brochure for SMA that shows you all of the programs that we do here in Putnam County. And then the next sheet outlines our behavioral health consortium. When we had the sequential intercept mapping in August of 2018, we came up with priority needs for the county. And since then, we've been trying to meet monthly, um, besides COVID and hurricanes and everything else, um, to meet the needs of these priority areas. So we've been working in subgroups for some of them and just addressing them in the monthly meetings. And then the back of it is the children's needs that are um, also being worked on simultaneously. The next sheet is the gap analysis that Christy Gillis has been helping us develop for Putnam County. And it shows the continuum of care from aftercare through, um, like just coming in for prevention through aftercare of treatment. So it has all of the different services, and then we've outlined which ones are currently within Putnam County that we have access to, which ones we have access to at other counties, and which agencies are providing it, and then the last column is where there's no services available at all. So we're not completely done with this yet, but we are. it is a work in progress, so we should hopefully have a finished product within the next few months. And then the last sheet on that side is the programs that SMA has been able to bring into the county since 2018 and the majority of them are grant based and time limited so you can see the first the first three are already completed with no reoccurring funds we were able to secure a second grant for the CTTU so we do have that in operations for another three years but there um, it also shows when the grants are ending and a lot of these are, um, again, time limited. Some are just planning with a short implementation to kind of see what other needs there are out there, like our um, Institute of Inter Intergovernmental Research, our IIR grant. We started out with a four-month planning and then went into implementation right when COVID hit. 
and that was when we were trying to develop the OD maps and the um, prevention in the schools, and a lot of that was kind of put on halt. So we're trying to put it together now, and the, the grant ends in September of this year if we don't get a no-cost extension. Ms. Reese, I have a question. Do you think, um, or maybe you know, not think, do you think there's going to be more money flowing from the federal government for these types of programs going into the future? I think we don't really know the full extent of what COVID has done to our population. I mean, I'm running across people who are hoarders now that haven't been hoarders or they haven't left their home for a long time. And, you know, it's, it's sad to see how people are living out there. And, um, I mean, I'm not living like that, but there are people that have right. walled themselves in and are just scared to death to do anything. Do you see more money flowing to help those that population? I think once we get back to another new normal, when okay. people are not afraid to be going out, I think we're going to see those issues start to arise. And at that point, I would think that's when the government would step in and say, you know, this is like the opioid crisis. Now we have to address this crisis. So whatever this crisis is going to be labeled, um, um, I would be sh almost sure that there'd be funding for it. So it's a matter of, you know, finding the right grants and the right partners to make sure that we can carry out the, the tasks. Okay, good. And on the other side of the folder is um, just some graphs that I put together. The first one, I hope, because I did these in a rush, putting them in the folder. So the first one should be the Putnam County Baker Act initi uh, initiated from July 2015 to July 2019 to June 2019, I'm sorry. This data is um, taken from the University of South Florida's annual Baker Act report, and it outlines how many involuntary Baker Acts were done for specific for Putnam County. And the second column is how many were under the age of 18. The third column is how many were over the age of 18. The next column is how many Baker Acts were written by law enforcement officers. The next one was mental health professionals. And then the last is ex parte, which is when family members can go to the courthouse and fill out an ex parte order to have somebody involuntarily committed for mental health. So that's how it outlines in our county. And I broke it down for the past four years that they have record of. The next one is the Marchman Acts and Mental Health Ex Parte Orders. Now this is taken for the, from the clerk of courts. So they ran the data for us. And in um, 2018, we completed 84 Marchmans, three of which were youth, 14 Ex Parte for Mental Health Baker Act, three were youth. Uh, 2019, we had 75 Marchman Acts, one of which was a youth, 13 Ex Parte Baker Acts with one youth. 2020, 95, three youth, 16 Baker Act Ex Partes, and 11 of those were youth. And then so far in 2020, and the reason I put 2021 in here was because Judge Janesk said that he's already been extremely busy, and he was going to try to be here today. I don't know if he came in while well, well, my back's turned, but you know, he's, he's already seeing the um, increase in having to write the ex partes and the Marchman Acts already, and we're just really three months into the year. And then the, f the next one is several documents together. You have, this is taken from the Frost data from the University of Florida, I believe, and it shows all of the controlled substance prescribing rate per 1,000 population specific to opioids. And for the past five years, Putnam has been in the top. One or two. The past four years, we've been the top. Yeah. And, I mean, it goes back, the data goes back to 2012, and between 2012 and 2015, we were second. Who's writing these prescriptions? The same people that need to be in jail. So, you, there's, um, this shows out of, there's three sheets, and it goes from 2015 to 2020, and it'll show you the, the county population at the time, how many prescriptions were written, and then how they got to that number to, put, to rank the counties. And I believe all 67 counties are represented here. Can I ask a question? Please. <laughs> why, why is it 
and this is based on population. We have a small population compared to like Day, Duval, um, Seminole, Orange, and yet someone in this county feels the need to write more prescriptions than everyone else. Is, does that not become problematic at some point? Did somebody not step in and start talking to the health care providers that are actually writing the prescriptions? I, I don't really have an answer for that because that's outside of, I mean, we, we see them on the other end. Right. Um, and well, the other end starts with this end. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if there's maybe some type of a planning grant that can be um, written for to try to figure this piece of it to out. To me, it doesn't seem like it needs a grant or a study. It needs a swift kick in the butt for whoever is actually writing the prescription and that and you, you obviously can track this stuff so are we entitled to know who the who's writing the prescriptions can we, we can get, look deeper into the data through the i would frost love system. to see that in rank okay. order who's writing the most who's writing the least can i ask you a question mm -hmm. can we when we do that can we also look at what they consider as opioids what it, what medicines are they considering in that because maybe we got maybe there's a big I'm not going to single out anybody because I'll, I'll get in trouble. But maybe this group takes a lot of these and that group takes some of that. And there's got to be something. That, but being number one in this field doesn't really excite me at all for the past four years and number two in the fifth year. I mean, it's crazy. Mr. Turner? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think that the Sheriff's Department also needs to be included in this because I know they do investigations a lot and they're involved in this very deeply and they do investigations on um, certain pain clinics or whatever that are writing these pres these prescriptions or what have you. So, you know, I think um, this is almost, Ms. Rousseau, excuse me for saying this, but the next item has also got to be part of this discussion. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good idea I think that we need to have a summit of the players in this, which include, you know, I think y'all talked about it at, at your meeting the other day, your tri-county meeting, and that was an issue everywhere. Um, and possibly it's even a bigger issue here, but if you could get the players to the table, like the Sheriff's Department who investigates this and they know what's going on, don't think for a minute they don't. Some of it they may not can do anything about, but they get what's going on. Um, Maybe you can get them to the table as well as the providers. No, they're, maybe, they're, they're maybe definitely part of the, some of the yeah. private providers. And, you know, I think that I see that a lot of the people that are here today are people who uh, live and breathe that, that, uh, that recovery lifestyle and that they're leaders in the community in that realm. And, you know, I think those would, that would be the proper place to get answers to the, what we're trying to get answers to is what, what would be the best way to move this forward and to answer some of the stuff that's going on and and do we put put dollars in a certain area as long as that those dollars don't compete with private industry because i have a problem with that i have a problem that the government goes into business against somebody that's trying to do it for profit and aren't a living at it so but that's the kind of stuff that needs to be talked about at a health summit um i will i'm very sorry to see that Mr. Hope Suggs is out today, not just because I don't want him to be sick, but also because I was looking forward to his participation in this discussion. Um, so perhaps, you know, if it wouldn't be too big of an issue, we could take tests. I hate folks showing up today and not being able to talk. So we go ahead and listen to anybody that has anything to say here today. But this commissioner would like to see that health summit. I'd like to see it go there but where we could have suggestions and comments from professional people that know what they're talking about because I'm telling you right now, I don't know everything about this issue, but I'd like to know more. And that's, I think, where we need to start is that, that summit that y'all came up with. What, what brought this up <clears throat> is um, serving on the Public Safety Coordinating Council, I've been very frustrated. Um, a lot of the frustration came after the onset of COVID because I realized that we were going to have a problem with folks that were um, relapsing because of the, the condition of the economy, being locked up, um, kids not being able to go to school. You've got, um, that, that starts your, your mental health issues um, uh, conversation. But um, real quick, just for some sticker shock, if I'm doing my numbers right, you got 109,624 prescriptions written in 2015, and it goes north from there. Somebody needs to be held accountable. 100,000 pieces of paper, 100,000 
dispenses of opioids. And you can't mix the words. Opioids are a derivative of, of um, opium, correct? It comes from the poppy seeds. Um, so, but, but getting back to what I was saying, um, you, you know, I, I sit in this room and I'm looking around and there's a judge and there's a state attorney's office and the public defender and you've got SMA, you've got peer support um, folks in there, um, Department of Children and Family Services represent, everybody's in there. You've got everybody that you need at the table. <clears throat> and for two years, nothing happens. And then I start becoming aware of what um, Jeremy's doing with his group. I mean, I asked a question at one meeting. We didn't have a quorum, so I said, then we're just going to have a conversation. So we start having a conversation, and, and it revolves around what is it they're doing right that we're doing wrong, <clears throat> wrong because we're spending money. And then Joe Wells um, has uh, said numerous times that the solution is not incarceration. The solution is getting the folks um, in, into uh, services that can help them get sober, get into recovery, get back in the workforce, get into stable housing. Um, so I it, totally agree with that 100 percent. The thing that I'm trying to say here is, is that if someone doesn't want to be helped, hmm? you can't beat them with an ax handle and make them get help. But you the, can't the, the do sheriff's it, department it? recently. That's why I think that Jeremy and them's program is so successful because they're able to, to get people to comprehend that they have friends and that they're there to help them. And that's the only reason that they're there is to help them. And I think that's why they're more successful than if we threw all the money we had at it would not be successful unless someone decides they need help and they can help them understand that they need help and right. try to get them to move over into that realm. And people who feel that they are lost they come and they they join hands with with, and it's not just Jeremy's group. There's several groups, but they're just so successful at it because of 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 their camaraderie and that, that it is volunteer and that it's and that they're so serious and so emphatic about it. And you know, so well, they've lived it. Yes, sir, yeah. I understand. <clears throat> but we, you weren't here the other day, but Commissioner Mullins from from Flagler County. I pointed here because he was sitting where Rich sits, yeah. but. He said, I'm 10 years sober from an opioid addiction. Yep. And it was like, wow, that, that's really cool. Yep. So well, it, the, 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 it would really surprise you who he is. I mean, right. No, no, I, 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 yeah. my eyes are wide open. Undoubtedly, a lot of people so, here. Yeah. yeah, right. But the, the, the point is, is I, I feel like as a commissioner, looking at our budget, that we've made, made no attempt to put the money out there and make it available. So in talking with Jeremy and Ed Killebrew, you know, they're, 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 they're doing what they can with what they have. But... If we were shifting funds from the sheriff's department to them, and the sheriff's department has already said it's much it's much cheaper to get somebody into rehab than it is to get somebody into jail. Um, so if, if if we're able to do that, are we and, done with Nancy? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I you know I, I want to thank you by the way because I, I was hoping you were going to bring this, and all of you saw the response in the email. But my when, when Nancy sent me this, my initial response was the doctors should be arrested, yeah. and and I, I really mean that because at some point somebody knows what's going on here. They don't just accidentally write 100,000 prescriptions. And how many doctors do we have in the county? That'd be an interesting number that actually prescribe the opioids. And we'll try to get all that data yeah, together. But, um, Thank you. The, I don't want you to have There to was just one more. This, okay. this oh. is the arrest for substances. So any drug-related arrest for the past. Um, and that's where we spend money. 2015 to 2019. Uh, I, yeah. get, I get where you're trying to go, Commissioner yeah. Rawls, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I get where you're trying to go, and I'm not against it whatsoever. I just I think we need to be very careful here because it's kind of like that, and I hate to compare it to this, but it's just kind of like it when the city decided they were going to build a restaurant down on the riverfront yeah. with, with city money, and, the, and that restaurant was going to compete against Muscle White and Corky Bells and all the other restaurants that people were trying to earn a living at. I fought it tooth and nail. I wasn't a commissioner then, but I fought it. And the reason why is because the government should not be putting money in an industry that people are trying to earn a living at unless it's a niche in the industry that the, that, that, that for-profit people that are earning a living are not, are not covering this, or this whatever. Is, this, isn't, this isn't that. This is something completely different. What, I'm, what I was hoping was, and, and by a lot of the folks that are here, um, was for the commission to hear what the total impact is because the, the, the person that, that, that has the addiction is one part of it. Their families are another component, the kids. Um, and, and going through adoption training, the one thing that you become really aware of is that when, when the parents are arrested, the kids are taken out of the home, or the kids are taken out of the home because the, the parents are, um, are a threat to the kids, then that inflicts trauma on them. 
and then try, trying to get the reunification back and trying to get the, the parents, uh, or the parent or parents, um, whatever the situation is, um, into a sober state so they can go through recovery. And, but being able to take the load off the parents while they're going through recovery um, and then having them, uh, the, the family unit get back together, all, all this ties in. I understand the issue, I really do, and everything you're saying I'm totally on board with, but stating the issues doesn't come find solutions. And we that's what I'd, what I'd like to find those solutions, right. and I think it's got to start with this summit that you and Mr. Suggs are proposing. I think it's got to start there that you, that actually that summit what comes out of there hopefully will be some solution or some recommendation to a solution because we could sit here for three weeks right. all day long and talk about <coughs> all the issues and the, the harm it's doing to the community and everything else. I don't think anybody would argue that point on any side of this. I just think that we need to, to, to have this summit, put the professionals at the table, and come up with some but, kind of. I mean, I, honestly, I'd like to have the non-professional. Well, buddy, that's fine, with me. <laughs> that's fine with you me. You have yeah. whoever you want. I'm just saying, but come no. up with solutions, and yep. the solutions cannot be just throw money at nope. a few individuals. It's got to be bona fide solutions that make it worth where you can go out and talk to to Mr. John Doe taxpayer and say, okay, yes, we did give money to this, but we did it because of this, mm -hmm. because we identified this as a possible solution and that that solution is valid. Then I don't mind standing up in front of anybody and saying, I spent your money. But like I said before, it has to be something in a niche that's not being handled by the private sector at the present time because I have a problem giving public taxpayer dollars to any entity that's going to go out and 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 therefore compete against somebody who's trying to earn a living, be no different than the government opening a construction company this and putting is, me and you out of business. Different, though. What, we're, what we have is, you, and, and I, I hope everybody would, would wants to come will come up and talk. But you have a lot of different factions that are all pulling in directions, but it's trying to get everybody wrangled in, and then. Um, you know, you, you, in, in this case, this is where you need duplication of services. Um, you, you need folks that can um, help, help with job creation. But one thing that really hit me like a ton of lead and it came from Judge McGill was the fact that a lot of times we want to be judgmental. We don't want to hire the folks. They've been convicted of a felony. They've been convicted of drug possession or drug dealing. Um, and then as a society, we just don't want anything to do with them. But that's also part of the problem that we as a community have mm -hmm. because we, we get to wear that, that, that badge that says we have an opioid problem and obviously we have an opioid problem. And not just that, um, there's also meth and other drugs. But um, so I think you're continuing to try to sell me on something I've already <laughs> been sold on. So it, right. it's a back to telling me how to build the watch instead need, of what we time need it to is. We, just, we need to fund it. We need to put something in the budget that addresses this. Well, let's find out Chair, what that Chairman. is. I think Mr. I'm Killebrew. Sorry. If you don't mind, Mr. Rawls, Mr. Mind. Killebrew would Button like. ain't working. He's yeah. got his yeah. Oh, I'm, my here. light's not working. <laughs> yeah, for some reason. It ain't that's... working again. I was trying to tap it, but I didn't want to interrupt. Can, so full that. disclosure, so everyone knows, we don't get to discuss this stuff amongst ourselves. So that's why sometimes it comes across like we're debating it. We're just talking it out because that's what we have to do because we can't do this in private. Um, so that's the first thing I want to say. Um, the second thing is just listening to you. I think you guys are both right on kind of saying the same stuff. And if we mix the two of you together, which is what I'm going to try to do, <laughs> is uh, I think we need to get all the players Turn together. The yeah. and, the and we need to identify where the holes are. We need to identify what's offered today, what we have, and where the holes are. And that kind of meets your requirement. Let's not compete with what's being done correctly. Let's find where the holes are, where we can improve, and then go there. I think we need all stakeholders, both private and public, there. And... Uh, I appreciate this, Nancy, that you put together because that gives us a lot of data to see where the, the stigmatism of this thing starts and then uh, work from there forward. So I think you guys are both saying basically the same thing, just maybe Thank the path too. to get there is a little bit different. But I just want to be clear because a lot of people in here are in here for the first time. This is our opportunity to talk about it too. We don't have an opportunity out outside of sitting here. Yeah, so we're not allowed to. Right. We're not allowed to by statute. So. And Nancy, one thing for me, one closing thing. you know. I don't take drugs like that. I, three Advil is plenty for me. But it bothers me that I can't go buy Advil cold and sinus without showing my license and signing <laughs> my life away. But yet, you look at these numbers and you go, what the heck's happening here? It's not your fault. I don't mean that. I'm just saying, you know, I'm with Jeff. You almost want to go 
nail these doctors' doors shut and say, you can't be doing all this all the time because there's a big problem here, and you're the problem. Not you're the problem, but you know what I'm saying. All right, Mr. Killebrew, you're at the microphone, Nancy's which is very unusual for I'm someone so like introverted, you. right? Been up there at least a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ed Killebrew, 146 Barden Estate Circle. Um, what I'm going to say is probably going to step on your toes. I've stepped on your toes before. You know, I'm not scared. Um, probably going to step on Nancy's toes some. But this same thing that we're talking about, this same whirlwind we're in right now, we talked about it three or four years ago. Matter of fact, we, I, I was on the phone with, with um, several commissioners back then when there was, a, I believe it was a $600,000 grant that was given to Stuart Marchman for them to take our detox center and move it to Volusia County. We now play them, what did we discover, Paul, Thirty dollars or $35,000 a year? Jeff? Mr. Adams, are you not paying attention to me? <laughs> I asked you a question. Okay, yeah. uh, and so here we are, we, we, and, and we just got through, y'all just signed off as a board on that grant a few months ago mm -hmm. to get to the end of it so they could get paid for it or say they were right or whatever. We lost a detox center that was supposedly serving, I mean, it was going to serve other places too, but it was supposedly serving Putnam County, and we lost it because people in Putnam County weren't in the detox center. They couldn't get a bed in a detox center because people from St. John's County and people from Volusia County were in our detox center and keeping our people from getting in the detox center. So several years ago, and I'm not tooting my own horn, I'm just trying to, I'm, we're all history and I know y'all know what I'm, what, I, what I'm telling you. Several years ago, I mean it, this goes back to Representative Van Zant's era, um, my wife and I went to him and started talking about a, a bridge, a place to come out of detox and get ready to go into um, a rehab, which we've got two of here in the county now. One one pays. I mean, you know, you pay big bucks to go into, and the other, like you were, uh, uh, you know, insinuating a while ago, they do a very good job on their own, and just getting, just getting money from just wherever they can get money from, scraping by, begging and borrowing, stealing, you know. And 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 I don't believe that that should happen. Um, celebrate recovery is a very it's a it, it works um i hope that some of these people behind me that are have come in here today will y'all will allow them to step up to you today and tell you what celebrate recovery has done in their life and you know you again you you said it a while ago you know the, they it works but back to the bridge the funds um representative van zant promised funds back then to help get funds to build a bridge so that it could go, so that these, and, and we were looking at young ladies, mainly, because, you know, when the young ladies come out of the, the, that, that dealer knows right when, what's going on. He knows when they're coming out of detox. Um, they're supposed to have seven days by the state. You know what the state says? They usually get five before they kick them out. They're very, they're, their heads still aren't clear. They don't, you know, oh, I got this. I can walk on, and their dealer's waking, waiting right outside and said, baby, I got what you need. Come see me. Come on. Come on. You know, and so there's a there needs to be a place, in my opinion, that there that goes in between. I mean, we got that. You got um, Recovery Point coming up over there. They've done a very good job. But I'm not saying give all your money to celebrate recovery. That's not what I'm <clears throat> preaching here. What I'm preaching is is we got we've done something. We we we've got a grant to do something. We've worked with six hundred thousand dollars. Where'd that go? And again, nothing personal against Ms. Ms. Russo back there, but you know, where'd that go for Putnam County? So to, to address it real quick, right now the way we do business is we, we're transporting people out of, out of county. Instead okay. of taking the money and directing in county, we're sending it out. And to me that creates a problem because the folks that do get out of county and spend a few days um, getting into rehab, by the time they get back here, the services are available if they have transportation and if the day is right. And, but to your point, we don't focus the money to leave it in county and, and help people here. And I understand that some people don't want to get help inside their own county. They may want to go out of county. But um, this, this is what, what I was talking about when I said that we need to focus on directing revenue at this. Because when I asked Jeremy what he could do with the money, he immediately started, his, his face lights up and he starts talking about the, um, the, uh, the, the, the youth, um, 
what, uh, recovery school. And I hope he talks about that because that's a really, that's a really neat thing. And we got an issue with our youth as well. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, if y'all would, if y'all would, you know, um, be patient and listen to a couple of these people, would it be okay for it. them to step up if they want to and talk to y'all? Yeah. I'd like love to love to hear them. Yeah, not a problem. <clears throat> Commissioner Rawls, I'm going to ask you to take the Anybody lead. other than Jeremy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, pal. My name's Jeremy Ray, 108 Barber Lane, Palaka, Florida, lifelong Putnam County resident. And uh, I just love Putnam County and the people in it. And, uh, uh, you know, I'll give my life for them. And uh, so what started out eight years ago as Celebrate Recovery, which is a family program, we have a, a, a program for the children, the youth, and the adults. So we're, they're learning kind of the same coping uh, mechanisms, the same recovery each night. So they get to go home, talk about it. So what, what began as a one-night thing is now every night, every day. I mean, we have a, we have a walk-in center um, during the day that people come in. They come from the jail, and we have a clothes closet um, to help people get ready for a job interview which there are tons of jobs right now in Putnam County. I just want to throw that out there. Um, but, you know, man, things are happening. You know, I'm, I'm trusting in God, and he's carried us so far. And, and if you want to give money, great. If not, that's great, too. We're still going to love you. Um, but we, there, there's, a, there's just so much going on, and I know that many people don't know, don't know about it. I mean, we have peers. We're getting ready to, to gear up and go into the, into the field. I mean, we're the ones that go into the gutter, you know, and I appreciate the ones that sit, sit behind the desk, and I have to sometimes. I, it drives me nuts, but, you know, we're the ones that go out there um, to the overdoses, and, and we, we reach out to those families, but um, we are talking about a recovery school, and we have spoke with the Putnam School District, and uh, that's going to happen this January. That's, that's our goal, and um, we have a building. The school has offered possibly one of their buildings that they shut down this year. Um, it's not going to take much to staff it. Um, we're planning for anywhere between 10 and 30, 30 kids. Um, these children will come and they'll get their high school diploma and they'll learn recovery because they will have a substance use issue to, to, to come into that school. But, you know, recovery point is, is growing. We have a piece of land. Um, right beside, right behind the church, um, we're, we're going to build a 40-bed facility soon. Um, so keep that in the back of your mind, um, and, and I believe that God's going to bring it to pass. Um, but there is a, a few people here today, um, you know, any of you guys want to come up here for a minute? So, you know, the, these, you know, he won't mind me telling you, these are guys straight out of the jail. You know, uh, we were, uh, Joe Wells, uh, many of you know that he was the last officer to arrest me. And, and, and I didn't go down without a fight, okay? But me and him are friends today. Um, and we, we've been in the jail for about five or six years now. Um, so are you coming next? Okay, this is my wife. <laughs> I just appreciate y'all. We're, we're here. You ain't going to run us off, okay? So We don't want to run y'all. Hello, I'm Melissa Ray, 108 Barbara Lane, Palaka, Florida. Um, I just wanted to shine some light on some of the topics that have been discussed as I'm sitting back listening. We have this phrase in recovery, and it's nothing about us without us. Um, and, you know, I was thinking, my kids love that. Um, it's a cake decorating show. I don't even remember what it's called, but they'll sit there and they'll watch it and they'll watch it and um, nailed it, I think it is. Like nailed it. They'll, anyway, they'll, and they've watched it so long, you think they know everything there is about cake decorating. But if you put a cake in front of them to decorate a cake with what they've learned, they're not going to be able to apply it. And that's the magic of what happens when a recovering addict works with another addict. Because not only do we have the knowledge that we've gained through the training that we've received, but we have the application. We know how to make it work. And that's why you see it work so well. And so to think that you guys sitting up here on the panel have knowledge about it and you'd be able to make it work, um, we don't knock you for that. We understand that, but we appreciate the fact that you have a heart to reach out to those that can apply it um, and to support that as well. And, you know, talking about the jail, um, that is one of the issues we have, but there's also a solution. I agree. We don't spend time in the problem. We have to spend time in the solution. And there is a solution. When people get out of jail, they get connected with people that can help them. Um, and that really broken our hearts when um, I've been going into the jail, ministering to those women every week for a few years now. And I had one 
that came out, and of all the hundreds that I talked to, there's only been a couple that have followed through, right? And this one called me, and it was about two years ago. And so I met up with her, and then when I went to take her home, where she called home at the end of the night, and I realized who she was living with, um, it just came over me that I am taking a baby and feeding it to the wolves, mm -hmm. telling them to get it right and stay together, but putting them in that same environment in which they got sick. Um, and so we actually opened the door of our home, and we allowed this woman to come into our home because I couldn't do it. I could not leave her there. Um, and that ended up, didn't take long before my husband was like, uh-uh, we're opening up the women's side of the recovery house. Um, and so now the women's side is open, and we have beds there, and, and people's lives are being changed because there's care and there's love being poured into them, and we're showing them that we can recover. Um, and I guess Jeremy wanted me to share this with you guys, too. I guess he forgot. We have an event coming up this Saturday. It's Save One More, and it's a Narcan distribution and education. Um, there's a lot of thoughts and opinions on Narcan, but the reality is nobody has a chance to recover. <coughs> today. And so the whole point of Narcan is giving somebody enough life to where they can get to that point. And maybe it takes that near-death experience in order for somebody to realize they want recovery, right? Because you can't help someone that doesn't want help, right? But we never know what it is that they're going to experience that causes them to want that help. This family that's pictured here, this kid, he was a kid. He was 18 years old. He grew up with my kid. He died twice and was saved by Narcan and now has a year of recovery and a beautiful family because he's working the program and he was saved by Narcan. So this we're doing next week on the 17th. If you have questions, um, if you have any kind of anything about Narcan, leave them behind, come to this event with an open mind, um, and just learn what there is to offer there. Thank you. I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the work you all do because I've been watching it and it's been wonderful. But does most of the people that come to you, are they opioid, opioid or are they on something else? And I don't know the difference, so excuse me that I'm naive about that. <laughs> Tell me what their, are they part of the prescription drug problem or are they pro part of the street drug problem? Maybe that's the question. So we reach, uh, we reach out to people um, that are more than even substances. So we don't really ask what it is that they're struggling with. Okay. Now, when we're getting in them in detox, that is important. And we, another issue that we see is with methamphetamines. There's no protocol for detoxing off methamphetamines unless they're using it IV. So if we have somebody that is trying to come off of methamphetamines, all we can do is set with them and be with them and, and help them with them, that temptation until their mind begins to get clear because there is no um, detox for that. So I think here in Putnam County, just from my perspective, um, meth, and heroin, um, and now fentanyl, is becoming really, really big problems with fentanyl the substances. Fentanyl and heroin, that is your opioids? Yes, sorry, yep. Um, and another gap we have that I wanted to mention is that the Marchman Act, we talked about not having a detox center here, and here's where the gap comes in with the Marchman Act, is that it's a two-part process, right? So first is the detox, and then they have to go back to court, or they have to refill out the paperwork and file for it and then go to court. Well, when we send somebody from Putnam County out of county to detox, then the family, before they can file the second part of the Marchman Act, that individual has to be back in the county. So that means they've left the place where they got sick for a few days, they've come back to the environment in which they got sick, and now they're supposed to stay clean until we can get the next part of that Marchman Act issued. And it's, it's just, it's not, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. If they could stay clean, then they wouldn't need the detox or the rehab. So um, that's just another hole I wanted to throw out there to bring a perspective in on that. And we, did, we discussed this at the um, Public Safety Coordinating Council meeting me the other day, and uh, the young lady that was there from the um, Public Defender's Office expressed her frustration as well. She's like, you get somebody that you're trying to help in court to stay out of jail, and um, they can't get help because the Marchman Act has that, that two, where you have to be, <clears throat> she said it could be a month apart, and they're on the street. So, um. Mr. Adamzak and then Mr. Pickens. So I, I wanted to comment after uh, Mr. Kilbrew, but you actually led into it a lot better for what my comment is not for what Mr. Kilbrew said. So th what I see the summit being is exactly what you just did. You identified where there's a hole. So what I hope is that several of the stakeholders, whether it happens before the summit or maybe that's what comes out of the summit, identify where the holes are and then try to identify who's best prepared to meet that need should be the outcome of the summit, or whether it's the summit or the, the summit and the follow-up actions. Okay. But you identified a need. That's what I hope we can have come to that conversation so we can identify what we're doing, what different groups are doing, what they're doing well, what the needs are, and then try to fill the holes of the needs. 
And I think that that would be the best, and I'm glad you identified a need. Speaker too, by yeah. the way. Thank you. And you know, in all honesty, it's um, a lot of what we're facing is way beyond Putnam County or, or the state of Florida. A lot of it is, is policies that need change, and that only happens through advocacy work at the legislative level. So, you know, keeping that passion and joining together as a group and advocating for the change, because just because there's a policy, it doesn't mean that the policy is working and it may need changed. Mr. Pickens is next, but I want to say something. Mr. Killebrew brought it up. May, you know, everything in politics is the right time. And it's the same with life, too. Everything falls in line. You're fixing to have some very powerful people in Washington, I mean, in Tallahassee, in this tri county area in the next few years that are going to be very powerful in their positions. So if policies need to be changed, now's the time to start exactly what Mr. Rawls and Mr. Adamzak and we're all saying is find out what that. There's a lot of problems. There's a lot, you're going to find a lot of different silos you need to work in. Mm -hmm. But if policy is one of them, you can get that solved very, very fast, pretty soon. I can tell you that. Because we had that tri-county meeting, and that came up. And when you have one of the, well, I can't, I'm not going to go into detail, but when you have one of the commissioners from Flagler County who admittedly was sober for 10 years based on that, next speaker of the house is coming from that area come on i mean it's the stars are aligning here for a reason let's not misunderstand that point i'm gonna turn it over to mr pickens he's got his light on this has been a, a great discussion for me i haven't said much but just to listen um, i knew this was a problem in Putnam county but i didn't know it was this bad and um i guess the question i have i've heard of this program and how many of the people that you are reaching, and I asked this, Mr. Ray, because you said this is in God's hands, and it is, it is. How many of the people that you're touching are staying with your church or becoming members of churches? I'll just go ahead and say this on public record. And nothing against what Nancy's group's doing anybody. This commissioner truly believes, unless you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I don't know that you're going to get through with this. Amen. Okay? Um, right. Both of my sons and my daughter-in-law have been prosecutors. She still is one. Uh, my son was a domestic uh, violence prosecutor for about a year here in Putnam County. And a lot of it is uh, because of drugs. And, and people need help, but I think they also need help receiving Jesus Christ. So if you can elaborate so on I'm that just a little bit. I'm glad you asked that. And first, I just want to, I appreciate Ms. Nancy and Ms. Linda and SMA for their partnership as well as um, you guys and, and the county's work and uh, the sheriff's department over the years. This thing wasn't easy starting in Putnam County because of the stigma, stigma that's on addiction. It's still here, but not as bad. Um, so I'll tell you this, the, uh, since the, over the past seven years, um, there's three pastors that came through Celebrate Recovery. One of them is a pastor at Trinity Baptist, Willie McKenna. I know he won't mind me telling you that. Um, I'd say of the people that truly do what's suggested, what we suggest to them, I'd say if, if they do what we suggest, they're going to they're gonna stay clean, they're going to stay at it. Um, we have a lot of people that are in church, not basically like church, but in other church leaderships, okay, because we... we we urge them to go to a church that they feel called to, okay? Um, but I'd say out of the people, like we just had our first graduation from Recovery Point. There was two guys. One of them sticking around, okay? The other one, he's hit and miss. He's still, he's a young fella. But the other one, he's, he's there every night. You know, he's getting involved in leadership. You know, so I would, I would have to say 50%. That would be a, you know, you <coughs> have some that move on. You have some that go back to jail, you know? You have some that go to other churches in other counties. So uh, that I, would, I would have to say 50% is probably a good number. Okay, thank so. you. You also have some of those that do leave, and then years later when they've hit their mm -hmm. bottom, 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 they come back too. Yeah. And so sometimes they're just not ready. There's still some more stuff they have to go through before they're ready. So You know, I'm glad you said that. I was in a revival one night. I'm, I'm going to take a point of privilege. Pastor grabbed the guy and says, you're not ready to receive the Lord. Because he knew he, he was just faking it. You know, and I was sitting there surprised about that. But he hadn't hit the bottom, bottom yet. 
And the pastor re recognized that and had, had, had that knowledge about it. And I tell you what, it wasn't a month later, the guy hit the bottom bottom and he turned his life around and never went back at that point. But he was playing with God at that point. So, um, my light's not working. My, none of this is working. So just, well, what, yeah. One of the things that, that brought this out was when we were having one of these conversations, we couldn't have a quorum. And, and, um, and the frustration, I asked someone in the room, um, why, why is it what they're doing works? I'm talking about recovery point. And the answer was, well, they're faith-based. And I said, well, there's a solution. We know we have a problem. We have a solution. So um, I know there's supposed to be separation of, of, of um, church and state. This isn't one of those conversations. Right. We're, we serve as a, le as a legislative body, but we also are citizens, and we're brothers and sisters, and um, uh, we, we're in civic groups, we're in churches. <clears throat> if, 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 if we don't all embrace this problem, then we're not going to get anywhere. And I look forward to a Tri-County Summit. I think that's going to be great, but I also look forward to us working locally with our citizens to get the solution, regardless of what comes out of the summit, that something starts here and stays burning and not just, this is just a flash in the pan. So, I, I tell you, um, when, the, when the pandemic hit, churches were closing, okay? Right. Overdoses went through the roof. Yep. Suicides started shooting up. We, we closed down for a week. And then we we're like, you know what? We're opening the doors up every night. So we started having meetings every night, secular meetings, Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous. And I'll tell you, Man, people came in, we, we had that secular pathway for them to come through, and, and it stuck. Man, you know, God was there. They knew what was going on, the people that were leading them groups, and, and it just filled the church up, you know. So we want to have multiple pathways um, to recover. We don't want to push someone out, and we don't just throw God on someone. That's not what we do. So it's basically just living a life of recovery, working a recovery. Um, so... It's, it's working, you know. Here comes Ed again. <laughs> yeah, I got just one more. I won't say it's one more thing. One more thing. Because I'm yeah, sure I'll have more to say. But uh, in, in answer to Mr. Pickens' question a minute ago, not only is it affecting the addict's life and the family <laughs> of the addict, but people like myself, <clears throat> I don't understand addiction. Well, I, probably most of y'all, all of y'all don't. I don't understand that drive. I don't, and, and I'm going to throw my wife underneath the bus here, and she don't want me to, but I'm going to. She, she, she not, Dan. well, I, I mean, she gets, she, she, she understands me. Okay, she's been married to me for, she's been married to me for 33 years. She understands me, but she made me understand addiction and the fact that it's an everyday thing. You get up in the morning. There's a song. There's a smell. There's a voice. There's a person that triggers what's going on with you, and that could trigger you. And my wife said to me, every morning I just give up and give it to God. Mm -hmm. I get up and give it to God every morning. I want to say this about me with church. Every time I walk in to celebrate recovery, I, as a born-again Christian, as a person who has it together, um, I find a new thing that's wrong with me every time. Um, whether it's Jeremy delivering a message, Melissa delivering a message, one of these guys talking, talking about what how their life is, and I find that. It, it brings a relief to me. I'm, I'm, I'm able to, if I have a chip in my hand, which I give you chips when you walk in there and it's a, you get you you get up and take it to the altar and leave that chip there and it's ceremonial you're giving it to God okay I'm I'm through preaching but that's that that's that but that's that's what I, I feel relief from that and and I I would as a person as a citizen of Putnam County invite all you commissioners to come to a Monday night meeting come in and sit down and eat dinner with them they start five forty five. 5.45, they start with dinner. Sit down and let some of these people talk to you. Let them tell you, you know, I mean, just, you don't have to tell them who you are. Just, they'll tell, just bleh, tell you about them, you know, what's going on. And then they'll get up and they go in and they have a praise and worship service. 
and then they have a time of, of people talking, and then they have a small group. But the small groups don't want to talk about. But just go in and see what's happening in there, and see the change of the people from week to week. I mean, these two, from the first time I met them, you know, to where they're at today. Um, you know, but that's to answer. I mean, to answer your question, it helps everybody, Mr. Pickens, not just the addict. But Ed, wouldn't, if I may, Mr. Chairman, you wouldn't you agree that until somebody's ready to, to get there, that you're not going to fix them? I don't care how hard you try. Absolutely, so, Terry. Mean, that, that's the part of this that impresses me. Y'all get that. Or the people behind you, and you get that. You're, you're not going to help somebody until they're ready to be helped. I'll admit, I don't know much about addiction, but I've been around it for 40 years because half the people that's worked for me over the years <laughs> has either been in, out, or headed that way. Right. So I get it, and we try to support them through that if we can. So I have been around it somewhat, but that's the one thing that I've noticed, even members of my family, the one thing that I've noticed until they're ready to stop, you can't help them. Right. They can lie about stopping. They can promise you anything they want, but they cannot, they're not going to stop until they're ready. But then great programs like y'all can move in and help them, but only when they're ready. Right, Mr. Turner, and, and the powerful thing about peer work is that sometimes that peer can say that thing that helps them realize that they are ready. You know, as, as somebody that doesn't understand addiction and has never lived it, it's kind of hard to see through the BS sometimes. Um, but somebody that's lived it and knows it and like, I know how you're thinking because I've been there and I've thought that and they can cut straight through that denial straight to, it's almost like cutting straight to the soul. Um, sometimes just working with somebody that's not ready yet, but continuing to work with them, um, it helps them get ready. If that makes sense. I'm not sure if I can make sure sense. It does, of it. Yes. Um, and then also the comment on, um, it doesn't work without God. Um, while we know that to be true, some people just aren't ready for that yet. Um, and so we just try and get them to say, to see that there's something more powerful than you out there in the world, right? Um, and we start there. So it's not like you have to be a full believer in Jesus Christ and his life, death, and resurrection, you know, but just believe that there's something more powerful than you because if you could stop, don't you think you'd have done it by now? But I've stopped, so something's helped me, you know, and so just hang on to that until you get to where you believe, you know, more. And whatever it is, there's people that we work with that have never come to celebrate recovery and don't want nothing to do with it. That's fine because today they're clean and sober because they have their own higher power, whatever that looks like for them. And we want recovery to be open to anyone that wants it. All right, we need to sure. move on a little bit. We got a few speakers want to speak. I want to say one more thing to you. God, besides you said that last time. No, no I, I know I didn't. I said I said I was going to, but then I, did, I said I know. And you not. changed your mind. That wasn't the truth. I'm gonna give him a hard time. I can't help it. Hey, I'll gavel you down, buddy. I'm but, telling you right okay. now. Okay, <laughs> but all BS aside, okay. We got money going out of this county. It's budgeted to go out of this county. You guys are the spokes on the wheel. Y'all need to budget some money back into this county. Amen. Back into back into whatever, you know, what wherever how we however we got to divide it up, and move it. You know, the ones that works over here for Stuart Marchman or the ones that works for Celebrate Recovery. We need to figure out a way to fund this project. A summit's fine, okay? That's great. We gotta start somewhere with, with the big guys. But these little guys down here are suffering right now. They're being smothered by the drugs that are coming into this county. We can't, I mean, we, we, this is a uh, decades war, you know? Been going on for decades with war with drugs. But we gotta figure out a way to help the ones that wanna be helped, okay? I'm through. Thank you. And Wendy, I understand what you're saying. Okay, what you said. We all understand what you got to put up with, Wendy. No, <laughs> it's not just that. So. My name's Greg Douglas. I just want to take a look around for a second. I'm still waiting for the Sheriff's Department to come in here and get me. No, we're not. I, I never in a million years would have thought that I would be standing up here talking to the commissioner. Matter of fact, Jeremy told me uh, just a couple of days ago, you know, about this meeting. So this is totally a... Uh, Surprising to me. We put our pants on just like you did. I appreciate that, but um, I've, I've been a Putnam County resident for 43 years. I tell my age. Um, I've been in prison three times. Probably been in trouble more than everybody in this room put together. Um, I've been addicted to drugs since I was 18 years old. 
um, all sorts. Um, drug addiction has just plagued my life, my family. <coughs> I've been through one program, and I don't want to take away from that program. The program did me good because it, it helped me identify my feelings and um, my character defects. But I've had no program touch me like this program here. I don't want to take anything away from detox. Detox is good. The problem that I had with detox and the several times that I went there, there was nothing afterwards. They did have, offer a 28-day program, but what they offered was normally a waiting list where you would have to go <coughs> home because they were full and you had to wait a week or two. Well, I don't know about anybody else, but me being a drug addict, I'm not going home and waiting a couple weeks to call. I'm going home thinking I'm fine, my drug addicted mind, I'm using drugs, I'm, do I'm doing dope. And so it's just like I went in and out with, with no positive uh, effect. Um, but I think it's good, you know, it's a starting point. But what they're doing here is awesome. I'm going to tell you, in all my years of drug addiction, and there's been plenty of them, this is by far the best program I've been in. Um, they're standing behind me. I ain't never had that. I didn't know how to have true friends. Nobody wanted to be around me because I was a drug addict. You need to hang around positive people. Well, I didn't know no positive people. Everybody I knew was drug addicts. You know, these people got an honest desire and they're sincere. They care about you and that's what I needed in my life. They support me, they love me, and I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say other than the fact that it works and, and a drug addict knows a drug addict better than anyone else. Um, people, I've spent time in that jail and in prisons. There are people, a lot of people in jail and prison that want help, but they don't know how to go about it. I've talked to them because I've had recovery in me and they just, they need that, that, that push you get them in somewhere where they can go and have sincere people that care about them and want them to stay clean, that's all they need. But they don't know how to go about it because all they've ever lived is drug addiction, drug addicted lives. I just think what we got going on here is, is by far the best thing that I've, I've encountered and it works. So however y'all go about it, man, I just, I'm supporting them. That's all I got. Thank you. My name is Robert. Uh, man, uh, I met Jeremy. I met Pastor Jeremy on one of his outreach uh, ministries coming to the jail. And uh, I was in jail for, for a theft. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a working man. I'm a certified welding engineer's apprentice. I've been building like ships and bridges and skyscrapers for 20 some odd years. And drug addictions has, <clears throat> has plagued me for like the last 15 years of my life. And, uh, and it was a problem, and I was an undercover drug addict. I didn't want anybody, I was very embarrassed. It's hard, it was hard for me, even now, to admit openly to people that I don't know uh, that I'm an addict. Like I said, an undercover addict, and Pastor Jeremy uh, spoke with me in the jail, and for some reason, I guess his spirit, I admitted to him. <laughs> Cause he asked me about it and I was truthful to him about it and he told me of oh, this place. This is my first time in a in a a recovery dealing with this issue. I've learned so much. I'm uh, right now I'm about three months in. I have six months more to go before I graduate. And uh I've learned so much in the last past three months than I've ever knew about drug addiction and dealing with things of this nature. And I feel confident. I, under, I, it's, I, I got a lot of more understand. I got a lot of understanding about what drug addiction is and how to go about it. Uh, twelve steps. I knew nothing about twelve steps. I knew nothing about. I, I just knew that I was an addict, and um, this place has blessed me through Pastor Jeremy and, 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 and the association and the people dealing with them has given me a lot, a lot of tools that I can use. Uh, toward dealing with this. And I heard uh, uh, one of you mention about you, you're not understanding uh, uh, addiction 
for me, in my experience, it's like looking left and turning right. It's, it's like wanting, you don't, you know that it's wrong, you know that it's bad, and if you ever hit a, uh, a dead end, you know that, and you just can't help it. That's what you do. It, Friday I get paid, and I don't want to, but I go out and I purchase drugs. And the bad thing about it, I do, I've done things on drugs that I would have never did sober with a right mind. It's like some kind of a spell, has some kind of a spell on you. Uh, would have never been going to jail for no theft if I had not been using drugs. I wouldn't have stole. I was stealing to get more drugs. So that's what I got out. Whatever they're asking for, I hope that you can give it because they're vi very vital to guys like me. That's all I got. Robert, thank you. We do have to move on pretty quick, so come on up, sir. We got other people that want to speak. Hello, my name is Michael Light, and I'll try to um, summarize this as quickly as possible. I hear a lot of discussion, you know, about, you know, if we, I'm going to put this into a cost-benefit, you know, uh, summarization for you. Um, <clears throat> I was a cocaine addict for 20 years of my life. I've been to prison four times for a total of six years. Just add this, please add these, add this up in this, in a monetary fashion as I'm going through these. I've been arrested at least 12 times in county jail. I spent six months in a criminal forensic uh, hospital for uh, contesting a trespassing warrant. Um, literally, just off the top of the head, easily over a million dollars in money has been spent trying to punish me for my drug use throughout 20 years um, with no result, really. 2015, as Commissioner uh, Turner was uh, discussing, um, an event happened that really changed my stage of readiness to, for recovery. Um, I was fortunate. I enrolled in a, I was able to gain entrance into a detox, but unfortunately, there was no treatment facilities in this county or any others that had openings. <laughs> they were talking like six months to a year wait list. So they ended up shipping me all the way out of Georgia. And this is back in 2015. I went to Turning Point. I was there for 30 days. After that, the hand of God came upon me and I haven't looked back. I enrolled in college here at St. John's. I graduated my associate degree with a 4.0 GPA. I transferred to Florida State College at Jacksonville. I graduated with my bachelor's degree last year with a 4.0 GPA. I bought a house last year. I didn't even have a bank account five years ago. I just bought a house last year in Boswick, over $100,000. I was pretty much homeless for most of my life. That is what recovery has done for me. Now, if you want to talk, you know, discuss where, if, if money becomes available, where it should go to, jails, <coughs> jails, <laughs> it's a waste, you know. This is money better spent. I'm now in my master's program, first year as a grad student at NOVA, has a master's counseling and substance abuse education. And um, I've been recently got, had the blessing to get involved with Jeremy and what they have going on with at, uh, Life Church. I believe that has been God's calling for me. I, I kind of believe that 20 years have been a training camp of sorts. But I'll wrap this up. I know you got to move on, but I just want to say if, you know, it's just come up on whether the money should be better spent on punitive or recovery. And no, I, I agree. Yeah, thank where, you. Where do you spend the money? We just got to reallocate it. <laughs> All right. Well, appreciate Wendy, your real time. Quick. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. We do have speakers that want us. Okay. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I just have a couple things I want to add to what Ed said. You know, you're all talking about Celebrate Recovery, and it's a fantastic program. A lot of, I know a lot of you have never dealt with addiction. It's more than just treating the body. Okay, that's what you have to remember. It's also treating your soul, which is your mind, body, and will. So, you know, if we're not treating that, you have that vicious cycle and that vicious circle where you, yes, you detox, you get out, you go to rehab, you come back out, you go back to where you used to be, and then you start it all over again because you don't have anything. You're not totally healed. So totally healing takes place when you have a program like Celebrate Recovery. I wish to God I had it when I was going through my addiction because I didn't. I had to claw and scrap my way through it all. 
So when, I, when we moved here and I, when they started their program, I was like, well, let's see what the boots on the ground are really like. Are we really doing something or are we just having a fluff program to say we're doing it? I encourage each one of you to go to one of the meetings because you will be surprised at how many people are really, really seeking help. They're not just there to be seen. They're not there just to fill a seat. They're there to really get some help for everything, their whole makeup, not just their physical addiction. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Alan, Paula? Yes, Mr. Adams. So I've had the pleasure of working with Jeremy and his wife for the last few months and trying to help out with the Nehemiah project. And, you know, every meeting my wife and I have said that when we go, you know, we've never been addicts, so we don't really understand. And we decided after the last meeting we went to, they say that uh, we're not going to say that anymore because, you know what, we have our place to help just like everyone else does. And I do want to recognize the fact that Putnam County is unique because SMA is a player at those meetings as well, and other people come in too. And uh, not everywhere can you get the public and private and Christ-based things together in one room without it being done through a summit. And that's already happening. That's the beauty of it, is we can build on that into the summit. And I just want to recognize that, that some of that partnership is happening a little bit in the background. So um, thank you. Mr. Pollan. Thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> My name is Alan Pollan, and I uh, oversee our clinical and community services at Meridian Behavioral Healthcare. Um, and before I get started, I just want to really, really give a shout out to the peer community. Without the peer community, the success rate would just not be there the way it is, and it's you absolutely can pull that critical. Up. You don't have to bend down. There. I'm a little tall. If there you go. come up further. Thank That's you. That's okay. I just wanted to come in and add on with Stuart Marchman um, of what we're doing at Meridian Behavior Healthcare. We have uh, obtained a license to move forward with a medication assisted treatment program here in Putnam County. And we are, we have the full intent of moving forward to set up a service location at, for, here in, in, Mer, in, these, uh, in this county. Um, that's going to include um, methadone treatment, suboxone, uh, buprenorphine, and also Vivitrol. So those are all options for outpatient detox. One of the biggest challenges will be when you want to come off opioids, but because of the side effects, as, as well intended as you are with the side effects that come with that, this will alleviate those. And also with that medication, we're going to be providing substance abuse counseling and mental health counseling that goes along with that co-occurring counseling, because we know just picking up that, that prescription for Suboxone or what have you, you're going to need the counseling to go with that. So we're, that, we're not just to drive through, pick up your prescription. There's going to be the counseling to go along with that. So I just wanted to add that to, to the discussion. Um, and Stuart Marchman, we've been in conversations, our CEO has been in conversation with Stuart Marchman to work together because we know this is a multifaceted issue. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, in the peer, we have over uh, 20 peers at Meridian, and we even have open positions for peer specialists at Meridian at this current time because we know how critical they are. And we would have more if we had the funding for those. Um, and uh, we also, of course, have our residential program. Uh, we have uh, four people. We, we, will, we will serve Putnam County residents for residential for substance abuse. And we also have our MISS program, which is for pre and postnatal moms with substance abuse issues. So we also have that, though it's not here in your county, but we certainly serve, can serve Putnam County with that funding. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rawls, do you have any other professionals you want to speak before I... Oh, Ms. Gillis is here. <clears throat> I think yeah. she should, should be able to, one that really wanted you guys to hear from as well. She's going to speak from a little bit different perspective. <clears throat> you were here not too long ago, weren't you? I was. Yeah. Okay. So, um, good afternoon. I'm Christy Gillis. I'm the Community Development Administrator from the Department of Children and Families, working with many of the professionals that are out here um, I also brought one of my coworkers here that can talk about the impact of children and families. I do appreciate this discussion. Um, we are here to help and support any way possible because it does impact our children, our families, and our community. And I do appreciate the conversations that we're having here. I think it's very forward thinking and it can truly make a, a positive impact on the community. You know, what I kind of heard today was it's multifaceted. There's many, there's many opportunities for everybody to be involved. Um, it's not one size fits all. So I, I'm really encouraged about this summit. I think it's going to be big. I do think we should start here.
before we add the pieces of St. John's and Flagler to the mix, but they, maybe pretty soon you could add that because they might could bring resources and different ideas that could help. But I think it's a wonderful idea to move this forward. And I appreciate Commissioner Rawls has always had this on his heart. And, um, and I appreciate him bringing that forward. Commissioner Rawls, anybody else you want to speak? You, you said you brought... Um, yes, I brought the operations manager, uh, Charles Puckett. Thank you. I was here for moral support. I didn't realize I was going to get to talk to. <laughs> you, you know what we learned in Tallahassee? You can just wave and support. Oh, uh, yeah, no, but no, we, we really like to get our, our hands dirty. And, and I will say this, the peers, <laughs> it's a wonderful program. I'm, I'm over all of Circuit 7 for child abuse investigations. And substance misuse is the, the biggest reason for children being removed out of the home in all of Circuit 7. It's, it's, that's the problem. Um, but peers have been great in helping us um, reunify families and getting that support. Um, Stuart Marchman's been great. In fact, we started a pilot program in East Volusia and Putnam County that did reduce children coming out of the home. About a third of the kids that we staffed with Stuart Marchman, and when I say kids, I'm also including their parents, um, only a third have made it to judicial or non-judicial intervention. That's two thirds that we've kept out of care. And it just involves us um, managing the family. When we first identify that substance abuse is a problem and a safety plan that's put into place, we're managing that. Stuart Marchman has been good about getting um, what we call a family intervention specialist involved to do a substance abuse assessment and then recommend them for treatment while we're all still involved staffing these families weekly to keep our eye on the ball. Um, and that, that has shown a reduction recently since October in removals. Um, they went up, they went up during the um, pandemic um, and all of Circuit 7, you know, but since we've started this staffing process in October, they've started dropping significantly. Um, but there's more to be done. And, you know, just that, that idea about the summit, that's a great, that's a great place to start. You're going to have everybody at the table, um, you know, coming up with ways to tackle this solution. Because you know, <coughs> we've been in the department for 20 years, and we've still been dealing with it for 20 years. And it started off with um, the pain pills, and before that was cocaine, and now it's opiates. And, I mean, it's just, it's just one addiction after another that, you know, that we end up talking about. But it's the same core issue. Well, thank you. How, how many kids <clears throat> are in foster care right now? In foster care, so I, I don't have it broken down by Putnam County, but Community Partnership for Children has 1,297 children in care. So that, just to put it in perspective, when a child is removed out of Putnam County, um, from a Putnam County family, if they're going into foster care, more than likely they're going out of county. So you're losing a potential citizen. And, um, you know, thankfully our relative and non-relative placement rate tends to trend around 65 to 70 percent so we try to keep them with someone but that relative or non-relative could also be out of the area and um you know if we can keep a family together safely in the home and put a safety bubble around that child for when the addiction is occurring that's the best case scenario um, but then it comes down is the parent ready um, are they ready to accept that they have an addiction and that they need help and then that's where the peers are beneficial our partners with Meridian or Stuart Marchman or any of our other um, private providers, that's, that's where it's beneficial, but, but the client does have to want to start making that change. And so. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, you're going to let us know on a future date of a meeting? For the summit? Yep. Um, I'll get with Suggs when he gets back. Yeah. We'll, we, yeah, that's going to be a great idea. And we're also, good. If, if everybody could um, get your information to Ashley, your contact information, I'm, I'm assuming that um, a lot of the folks in here, uh, especially your group, oh, Jeremy and Ed and um, SMA, Meridian, you guys are all going to want to participate in this, I'm assuming, correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's important. But I, I think for us as a community, we, we come first, not to sound selfish, but you know, we've, we've got to get our house in order as well. <clears throat> Hotelin, you're the last speaker on this, and then we're going to move on. Oh, you've got a lot of stuff written down. No, I just mutter a lot out loud with my ink pen. Hi, Tim Hotelling, San Mateo. Uh, Do you want to read your notes or you got it? <laughs> same deal. Um, just, I don't know what documents you got but that you were uh, recoiling at with numbers and whatever, but it appears to uh, do with the amount of drugs coming in and being used and abused. And I just wanted to make sure that you knew from your attention that uh, the, the, a lot of those drugs are regulated. 
And after the opioid crisis, well, Joe Ranazizi from DEA got drummed out of DEA because he was pushing this very thing. Uh, but he's a lawyer and he's still messing with the, the producers. Bottom line is DEA goes out and makes controlled buys of various kinds of, of drugs just so that they know the chemical compound and the markings on the packages and things like that, uh, as well as uh, the prescription end of it that's full of statistics so that they have quite a knowledge. Uh, I, FBI also chases doctors that are running, uh, prescribing more than they can, which is what you're talking about. I would suggest that in your round table, you include those folk and probably separately and, and uh, prior, you should invite them here to give you a, a show and tell as to what they know about it. I would <coughs> encourage you to write a letter from the board with your signatures uh, saying, gee, we have these numbers, uh, you know, rather than just go through Gator, I mean, y'all, it has the power and send it to the, the various special agents in, in charge of the DEA and the FBI. Tell us what you know about our problem. Tell us how much assets that you've been applying to this and tell us what you're going to be doing for us in the future because they have a lot of places they can send their manpower and I haven't seen that they spend a lot of it here. Tim, thank you so much. All right, good. We'll look forward to that future date and appreciate everybody that came to. Yes, me. Come up, yeah. speak real quick. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, at the time, I really am just um, there Do for... Do speak into the microphone. So, um, I'm there just for my certification right now for a peer specialist. Um, so I'm doing most of my volunteer hours right now with Miss Diane. Um, so basically, she just made these folders so that I could represent them to you guys. Um, she wasn't able to make it today due to um, conditions of possible um, coronavirus. So, um, I know her. I yeah. Know. What's your name again? <laughs> My name is Jessica. Jessica, okay. Yes, sir. Um, so I, too, am also a recovering addict from substance abuse. Um, never would have imagined in a thousand years that that would have been the case. I come from a line of ministry and things like that. Um, so, you know, I feel like I wanted to give back the same love and the hope that was given to me. So that is why now I want to be in this field because... As Mr. Terry was saying, um, we cannot force people into recovery, but we can also be a helping hand and a guide and just a voice and advocate, you know, things like that. Um, it took a while for it to click. I mean, I've been to rehab three times. I've been in and out of the Putnam County Jail and things like that, but I had to come to the realization that it was time for change. So I had to take the steps to make that happen. So. Um, just wanted to represent that to Thank you guys. You. And, and you'll be part of that summit also? Absolutely, yes, yeah. yes. Good, thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. We're going to take a two-minute recess, and we're going to be right back. Before we do, real quick, if I could just say, one. I am really, really yep. proud of everybody who got up and spoke today, having the courage. <clears throat> because it, it does, it takes a lot of courage to, to admit that you have a flaw like that, but just to rise above it and then to be able to get out um, and be a peer mentor and, and help other folks. Um, and your testimony, sir, you're doing great. Two Thank minute you very break. much.
spent is that your study. Is that your presentation, that whole notebook there? Could you just skip through all that and just tell us how much money you want? <laughs> I just brought them up in case we needed any data. That's okay. all. I promise you I'm not going to bore you with that. How much money is your study? I don't know that yet either. Okay. Uh, but, but, but what we're so you do, want us to authorize you today to go find out how much a study would cost? As a consensus, do you guys want us to go through? Okay. I do. Okay, I do. the steps of that. I mean, that was what the, today's but, mission but was. But I have was a question to... for you. Yes, sir. We know that there's some counties around us that have already done this. Right. Sure. And they've already used studies and they've, they already have the methodology. Mm -hmm. I've asked for that. I've not gotten that yet. Okay. I would like to see that because okay. I'm not so sure this commissioner wants to spend money on something if we can just, we have other rural counties, we can just, plagiarism is pretty good in my opinion, so. Okay. Um, but I mean, if we have to, we have to, don't get me wrong. Somebody has to do the study for our demographics. I got it, I get it. how laid out and how we want to, how we want to do the funding. But they might not study. have to do the full study, they might just have to do the methodology based on what we want to do. Correct, correct. Good. We, we've been to one of the counties. I've got one of the complete studies. I don't have it via email. I do have paperback copies of what they printed us from their studies down. We, when we went down and visited Lake County. Okay, good. So they do have, we do have a copy of theirs. That's we got available. Baker I, County? I, I, I got a paper copy. I can absolutely yeah. make you a copy. And Baker County too, I think it was? Not have one for Baker, but I'm sure Mr. Commando could help us with yeah. that. Okay. Didn't Columbia County do one recently? Or don't they do, sure. don't they I, I would have to look. I mean, I, I haven't really studied the counties right now. Okay. I think Lake had put one in this, in somewhat of a similar situation to what we were. So we Hang on, Mr. We, Turner needs you. No. Mr. Chairman, I'm not advocating that we waste money in any way, shape, or form, but I'd like for this again to not <laughs> bog down in the particulars and just go ahead and let him start the first process. We have, won't cost us anything to find out how much this study will cost. And then I'm sure that Director Grimes is going to go and look at other areas and whatever, ever, all the information he can get his hands on. And I'm sure that whoever, if we end up hiring somebody, would do the same exact thing also. So uh, if that's the case, I'd like for him to be able to go ahead and move forward today with at least starting the process of how much it would cost. I mean, if it's $10,000 or something like that, then why are we even bothering? Let's get it done. You know, if it's 150,000, we need to talk about that, about how we can plagiarize other areas and do whatever the case may be. So, so you know, I'm there to support you, but there is a, a, a price tag. Oh, I, I agree. I mean, and we'll, and we'll reach out to the surrounding counties around us and figure out, I mean, we can find out what they paid for theirs and okay. the area right, we're well, in, and we can reach out to some of the consultants they used and, and, and get prices. That's my two commissioners on the left hit the button at the same time, so they're both but Commissioner I'll yield to the, I'll yield to to the, the Vice Chairman. <laughs> so. Wasn't there some type of study done just a few years ago? Um, was yes. two, we wasn't had it? one done for Putnam County in 2000, and I think it was 2003. 15? Yeah, no, two this was, was there, was there 15 a 2015 as well. Yeah. There, 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 was uh, been, there was proposing. You remember, we, we discussed this as soon as I got yeah. elected, because yeah. I remember Chip was, yeah. they, brought, um, they brought people in and, and but I don't We're talking about what it was going to be. It was never seventy-five dollars per household and a hundred something or two hundred something per. I never saw those numbers. The presentation was in the, the small. Yeah, but I never. Yeah, they had, they made us a presentation. Was what was killing us was was the commercial. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do remember that. Now. Okay. okay, but you just start and you'll bring us back a price of what it's going to. cost. Yeah, I mean, I, if there's a 2015 study, I'd love to look at 16 it. Sixteen, maybe. Yeah. 2016. I. I, I that was not aware there was was one, but we can definitely take a look at that. Who did that one and see if there's some adjustments we could be made to that? I don't know if that document ever really landed. I think it, I, I think found one from 2015 happened, that was directed to. I just saw a presentation. Counter. I never. Yeah, saw I don't it. think. I just say check into it if you yeah. need. A, if you need a study, Jr. Tell us how much it is. <coughs> okay. But we're definitely going to have to have somebody lay the demographics out for us and try to put it on some kind of sliding scale or or however you guys want to adjust any type of, I, that's totally I, up to you I would definitely guys. like to do that rather than to rely on old information that's really not going to correct us forward. Right. So. Old or somebody else's. Yep. yep. Mr. Rawls? I have an aversion to a sliding scale. I think it should be equal and undiminished. Um, we have ad valorem taxation, that is your sliding scale. This is something, just like trash collection, everybody um, needs. It makes us sleep better at night knowing it's available, and I think we should all be paying equally on that. That's just my two cents on that one thing. I also think that we have an opportunity to utilize our fire committee that we, that we formed, bring them back to the table, and get them um, the data from, uh, and I believe Columbia County has, a, uh, has an MSBU, but definitely Lake County. Um, 
What is Alachua County doing? Are they running MSBU or? No, I think they're, I think they're uh, ad valorem funded. Okay, but look, you know, maybe give that to them and let them go through and, and <coughs> digest it and come back with a recommendation. Maybe they have an opinion about it. It worked well, you know, to get us where we are that, you know, right now. And um, this is our citizens talking for it, talking to us and for us. So you're, so you're asking me if I had to look at the Lake County study, is that, is that what I'm gathering? Or did yeah, you have to well, whatever, no, whatever, whatever we can get, um, get them the information and then let them take a look at it and let our, our committee make a recommendation. It, one of their things was they, they, they were in favor of moving forward with a, a, a fully funded fire rescue service at some point in wow. Putnam County's lifetime. Um, and maybe this is an opportunity for them to finish up what they started. But I think that Commissioner Turner is going to be right. We're going to need to know the numbers before we, but I, I don't disagree with Commissioner Rawls about the Citizens Committee. Mr. Adams, that? Yeah, I mean, that was one of the priorities of the Citizens Committee. I think I brought that up on that day. Um, I'd love to see that. I don't know that it has to be the same group of people. A lot of those people have changed roles and changed things. So maybe we start a new committee where it's part of it's volunteer again, part of it's paid professional, and part of it's basically someone that we nominate and uh, maybe the chairman or vice chairman had it up or something. But uh, I'd love to see that committee, regardless of this particular item, I, I think that's something we need to, going forward forever. So I think that should be one of our standing committees for the county. So I just wanted to add that. Mr. Turner. I have no problem with opening another committee if y'all want to do it, that doesn't bother me at all, as long as we don't use that as an excuse to bog something else down around here. I mean, <coughs> we're gonna study something Let's study it. If I don't not, want if we, to, I'm ready to move forward. I mean, yeah, I let's find out what this calls. Move right. forward. If it's underneath the threshold that you and the ch and the uh, county yeah, administrator could just right. go do it. Okay. I mean, we all agree that it's needed. Yeah. And we know you're going to be frugal as you can possibly be with the taxpayers' money. I know that at the bottom of my heart. So, if if you if they if you suit him. And he, he suits Suggs and all. I just say y'all go on and do it. I don't need to see this again. I mean, if you need a study, look, f find all the information you can find and present it to your chairman and your administrator. Okay? <laughs> Unless it's going to be over the amount they have to pay. I right. mean, and then you need, you're going to have to bring it back here. But other than that, do you have this commissioner's consensus to move forward and well, get it done? If I could, if I could say on. one more thing real quick. Um, you guys had a number between eight and 12 million. After that last, it was 8.8 .8 million is what they came up with. So. That who come up with, I'm just. The committee. Okay. Um, when you guys looked at it, or you, you weren't on board at the time, when the committee when the committee did, that was, they were looking at 8.8 um, .8 million. So knowing that there, you know, just if, if you went from a hypothetical position, eight, eight, $9 million, and you've got, you know how many residences are in the county? How many businesses? There's 90,000 accessible lots if you take out the city of Palak. Can you do an MSBU on vacant land? Yes, yes you can. City, okay. That's so, the way the city is. So if you, if you take your, your houses, 39,000 plus or minus, um, and then your, your vacant lots, Mr. take, a, yeah, take well, everything, uh, then the, the math so is we're going to take simple. this discussion today, and we're going to turn it into whether or not we do a fire MSBU. Yeah. This is a, he asking us for a, a damn doing, study. We're doing not it. on I understand, but really we're gonna <laughs> the, we're gonna turn of, that into a an MSBU because I'm not for that. Well, at that's this what point. the conversation's about is an MSBU. No, uh, sir, it's not either. Let's have no, that. It's not. Let's have no. that. Okay. Get the study. Let's get go. Is ahead. that what your study's about? Rather to form an MSBU in the county that's for the fire service? That's what Lake County is. Because if it is, I'm not for it. Well, I mean, it was because it, it, it's been mentioned multiple times for the dais to come up with alternative funding for fire services. Okay, so that's I mean, my words. That, that's what the funding is. What I mean, it, it's got to be determined by you guys what, how we go about it. But we have to have an things all things that we need within the system. That's what we're talking about, right? That's no. what the study is. You're a fire assessment study, right? No, it's it's just for this is for funding funding, funding of the fire service alternative funding. So basically, this is a backdoor study on us doing a fire service without having a discussion on doing a fire service uh, mm -hmm. MSBU. That's what we're talking about here today. The, 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 it, it's for alternative funding. We, we only have. I understand that, Jeff. I'm not trying to be argumentative. Right. I swear I'm not, even though I usually am. I'm uh, not it, this time. It, it, but what, what, they're, what they're asking is that if, if they can go ahead, um, I, I don't know that we need to spend the money right now. If we knew that, like I said, if I'm, I'm just hypothetically $9 million, 
and we know that if it was $100 per vacant lot or $50, whatever you want to call it, and $200 per household or whatever, and you come up with this magical number, then you know if you have an, um, an MSBU assessment, if, it, if it's MSTU, you're not going to get there. It, that's, that's ad valorem assessed, and we just can't get where we need to be. Um, but what it would do is it would relieve, if the MSB would relieve a lot of strain on the general fund as well. And I understand, <clears throat> Jeff. And it, well, Mr. Chairman, that, is that what this we're going to talk about this afternoon? Because I didn't know it. about this. And that's part of it. Summary that. highlights discussion of the board. Maybe I'm the only there. one that believes in not re re raising no, taxes no, no. around here. Well, it, here. Here's what I'll say again. I'll bridge the gap between the two of you. I am not for a fire MSBU unless we find a way to offset some of the savings in doing the MSBU by lowering ad valorem taxes. So I can be between the two of you. I'm all not for upgrading everything that we pay, but I'm for spreading it out amongst more people. But if we do not have a study, right, we, we know we want to go to a, a countywide fire system. How do we get there? And will a TU solve the problem or a BU? I don't know the answer to that. You can't that's, raise a millage rate on a TU. That's what I'm saying. So you're going to have to bring that back to us the price of the study and let's look at it and then we need to make that correct decision and that's where we're going to go from here. I just a direct say, offset, a right. direct offset right. in, in ad valorem tax correct. reduction. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. Because if there's no deduction, the, the yeah. net we tax. We all agree with that. I'm with you. Tax I agree. Not I to be it. less. I'm not going to vote yep. raise taxes. I'm not either. Again. Right. Right. Well, so I, what, I, it, what I the net effect would be is the folks that are paying um, ad valorem um, would see a significant decrease in the ad valorem side. Um, the folks that are paying nothing on the ad valorem side would be participating in what in, in the same benefits that we all have to pay for. But I, I think we're just we're, we're at that interesting juncture between a rock and a hard place. We can't go up on ad valorem. We only have one direction to go through, and that's going to be a fee base, whether you call it an MSBU or a fire service fee or whatever. I think I think we're just we've hit that bump in the road where we're going to have to make an adjustment. But hey, some of these, some you, of these Terry, funds, you, you said it best. Funds, you said so it best. The way you just said it is the best way any of us can say it. Some of these funds that that are going to be expended in the future, I think we're going to be able to have them without an MSBU. But if we have an MSBU, then that means or a TU, whichever it turns out, then we could. And we can offset that against the millage rate. I'm willing to listen to that as long as it's not a net tax increase. Because I'll tell you right now, for the I haven't said this yet, but I look for Putnam County to have an increase in tax dollars coming to us this year. I believe that to be the case. And with it coming, I, this commissioner is going to shoot for another tax decrease in the millage rate this year. But he's fixed and ask us for almost nine hundred thousand dollars in his in his needs assessment for his budget he that's needs that's what i thought we were going to do with this a study was a needs no, assessment no no he's saying right now the budget request that he's going to make of us this year i've already taken a sneak peek and there's eight eight hundred and eighty thousand dollars of a right. request of, and I, I asked him is this need or want he said this is pure need well, of course. So, sure. <laughs> but that, that's not to get us where we. That's not to get us. Bad of a wife, Jr. I got to have this. No, no, no. I mean, we we, 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 we have done. That was a joke. We, now, we, don't we, get we, mad we at me, big fella. On all level, as far as we can take it, says this is what we absolutely have to have. That's a, that's almost a million dollars we've got. The other thing I want to get ready to be aware of. Burr away, yeah. Hang on, Mr. Adams. I need you. Mark. So, I, I like I, the way you worded it was. Yeah. But I've thought and tried to word it that way several times. So I just want to acknowledge that. Um, the key thing, it goes back to the same comment I was making about the water thing, and it's completely different, is 30,000 property owners shouldn't be paying for the service for all 100,000 or 90,000, whatever there is. Yeah. So we need to find a way that we balance out the cost across more people. Well, I agree with your concept. I truly do. I think that in the, the water and sewer thing is a different thing yes, because yeah. you have to invest in in that it's stuff to make it work you yeah, have to invest in it well, if so. you build it they will come like field of dreams you know so fire safety is part of that infrastructure. i think you know which we're trying to go to so you've got to bring us back the alternatives so sure right, did stir it. up a pot this afternoon there director <laughs> Grimes. he's fine he's fine all right thank he you. knows i've okay. just played you. <laughs> mr hotel you got something you want to share again Tim Hotelling, San Mateo. Um, before you all came here, uh, when Mr. Larry was here, they worked real hard on 
this very same thing, and that's when the study came out. My understanding was the hitch in the get along was because of a state law, which you can help, or some regulation, whatever, that said you couldn't impose the assessments on agriculture and forest lands, and we're 87% agriculture and forest, and apparently that upset the numbers. I didn't get right into it, but there was there. And secondly, and I think most importantly for Mr. Grimes, is that uh, I've, in the past now, it's been a bit, but uh, Alachua County has gone this very same route and there was a citizen's uh, appeal lawsuit, and I know it went as far as the district court. Uh, I suspect that it may have tried to go further, so you might want to uh, do some homework on it, but it's, again, about the... Was that the EMS funding through the rest of the year? It was. I think that best, was best. That's different. That was because they were assessing EMS. And you're not allowed to do that. We're having a fire conversation on Yeah. 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 Maybe, my, my, I was just on, on the radio and, and a little bit of homework. To the best of my knowledge, it was a combined thing also. And, uh, or it's under that same concept. And the, the litigation was, can we or can't we, which is pretty much that. So it, it'd be worthy of a, a few minutes to make sure that it's legit. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner comments, Mr. Adams Act. Um, I'd like to start with, uh, the whole separation of church and state thing. That's not my interpretation of the Constitution. Um, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That's limiting the government. It's not saying the government and the church can't participate together. Um, that's my interpretation. I've spoken on the Constitution several times and I get some resistance on that. But uh, So I just wanted to uh, share that with Mr. Rawls. Um, I really like the conversations we had today. I, I like that we're as much as it seems like we're boisterous, I like the fact that we put things out there and we talk about things. A lot of times we get a lot closer than we th really think we are in our own heads. At least that happens to me. I'm not sure if it happens to the rest of you guys. So I appreciate that and uh, just thank you for uh, allowing me to say my nonsense from over here in this Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Turner. I have no further comments. Mr. Pickens. Excuse me, I have no further comments, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> really? I didn't have it turned on. I got it. I want to make sure you heard that. I know. No, I just need to see, I don't have any comments, just need to see Mr. Troxell and, and uh, Rich after this meet for a couple of minutes. That's it. You want to flip a coin? Who gets them first? I get them first. Okay. You, you, you probably <laughs> have papers. like much of a coin flip to me. <laughs> you probably have papers He's assigned. vice chairman. He's coming up the ranks. <laughs> you got to sign something, I'm sure. Mr. Roth? I just want to thank everybody for your participation today. This is something I've, I've been really wanting to get out. It was actually on my list of priorities. So. That's what I was saying. We're going to right. get to these things yeah. because of that. Yeah. So, so that um, you know, I, this is something that I, I think we can all hang our hats on um, when we work through it, and it, it's going to help our community. Um, the biggest thing is we all set up here in a non non judgmental way. You know, that one gentleman said um, yeah. he was so nervous to be in front of us. And I think that's, that's the barrier we need to break down, is to let them know that um, as a community, we, we understand people are gonna fall, they're gonna have their fall from grace, we can help them get back up, we can help them um, get the help they need and um, be productive citizens of our society instead of being a burden to us. And I think this thing is gonna be a lot bigger than you can imagine when you start peeling the onion back, but I think it's gonna be a good, a good thing at the end of the day, and it's really gonna move our county forward and um, then we'll find out where our baby's ugly and we can clean it up. You know, I mean, that's the bottom line. County attorney. Did you know, I didn't have anything, but as part of your discussion, just remember, I mean, the whole concept is not separation of church and state, but this is what public private partnerships were designed to do. Right. So Thank that's you. That's all. Thank you. Julianne. And no comments. All right, is there any public comments on miscellaneous items? I thought for a second he was gonna start a constitutional debate with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd stay late for that. This meeting's adjourned. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd stick around.